Hello and welcome to the video. This is just a quick update uh, to let you know that I've started to get these things in um, to have a quick bit of a play with. This is the M Plus. This is one of the new Archer receivers from Free Sky uh, that are the new receivers that they've started making as they stop development now of sadly the X series receivers. Now these receivers are access protocol only. FreeSky have been shipping their radios for quite a while now with the access protocol installed, but these are the first uh, dedicated receivers to come out. Some of the older receivers, a handful, have been able to be flashed with access. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a very quick video. Access isn't something that I've talked about. Um, and to kind of cover what access is actually and then talk about what's different about these receivers versus things like the X series that a lot of us have been using for a very long time. So in terms of the hardware there are a number of critical differences. Uh, the first of all of course is that it does only support the access protocol and it has a much wider voltage range support of three and a half to ten volts for all of the Archer receivers which is going to give us lots more options for when we put them in size models. Although to be fair I always run my receivers on five volts particularly if it's going to be running five volt servos. But the lineup is pretty extensive for these new receivers. There's one pretty much no matter what you want to build. But before I talk any more about the receiver itself, let me talk a little bit about what Access is. So Access is the new protocol that replaces ACCST, which is the protocol that the older radios have been running and that I've been flying with for five years. Um, it was recently updated. I did a video about that where version 2.0 included some encryption. Version 2.1 of the firmware has fixed that. But there's versions now, uh, the ACCST version 1.x and version 2.x don't talk to each other. So if you do an upgrade on your receiver or your radio to version 2, you've got to take everything to version 2 or vice versa. And that's made that side uh, very complicated, unnecessarily so in my humble opinion. Now, access has a lot of benefits over ACCST as a protocol. And there's actually some really, really good ideas in here. Not a lot of them are new, but they're new to Free Skyland. So the first one is, and it actually says on the packet, over the air, that looks like an antenna, it's actually a T, not an I. Uh, so you can update the firmware over the air, so you don't have to do things like find the radio uh, wire and plug it into the smart port at the bottom or into the JR bay to actually do the update. And that's really good news because it means that if your receiver is hidden away in the middle of a quadcopter or stuck away in the back of a fixed wing model, then the updating of the firmware should be an awful lot easier. 24 channels and lower latency. And then the binding is very different as well. So the way the binding works is that when you go into the radio in an access radio and go to bind something like this, uh, you can bind up the three receivers. You can have multiple telemetry streams from different receivers. So you can have your telemetry coming from different places. You can not only have multiple receivers bound to one radio, but you can have one radio bound to multiple receivers. So it's really, really flexible like that. And I love that idea. It means that I could potentially have one model bound to something like a small uh, x light style radio and a full-size Tyrannus or QX7 style radio. And depending on how much room I have in the backpack or the back of the car, I could just take the radio that fit best for that particular day's flying. The kicker is, unfortunately, access isn't supported on lots of that older technology. So things like my 2015 Tyrannus won't support access. All the X8Rs and those are the things that I have here that I'm using on a daily basis also don't support access either. And that kind of brings me on to what does it all mean? If you're a new pilot and you're buying your new FreeSky technology now, then you're gonna get a radio with access on it, whether you like it or not, and actually, these seem like really nice receivers. So if you're gonna start out with access, just the, like the position that I was in four odd years ago when the X series receivers first started coming out and ACCST D16 mode was the new thing because you've got all the telemetry and all that goodness. That's kind of similar to new pilots now. So if you're gonna start out, access is a bad choice at all. Uh, get the new receivers with the new radio and hopefully when they replace access with something in four or five years, 
um, you'll have an investment in your receivers and you'll continue to use them and you'll be kind of where I am now. And that's the bit I want to talk about a little bit more. That is where I am now. I have been a loyal Free Sky user. I've made hundreds and hundreds of videos on the product and I have a huge investment in AWCST D16, both in receivers and also radio technology as well. And the fact that none of that technology or very, very few pieces of it will support access is really disappointing. It's also a shame that this also means that the X-Series receivers that I know and love have stopped development. I to confirm that with uh, FreeSky. Now, they are still going to make them, still going to sell them, but I'm a bit sad about that. I would like more X-Series receivers to be coming out. Um, all the stabilization is now going into the new Archer receivers and the S6 and the S8R. Although a great idea, the implementation I don't think was very good. They could have done another stab at that and hopefully made it a lot easier and simpler to set up for everybody with uh, a nice script on the radio. But I guess that's not going to happen now. And for me, I'm worried that this means that for AWCST D16, Pilots like me, we're going to become the jilted generation and that the support for us is always going to take second place to the access stuff. I guess that's just the way it works in technology, isn't it? But that makes me very sad, particularly, and the example I'll give you is the recent change with AWCST version 2 not working with AWCST version 1 and vice versa. If you update uh, anything to AWCST version 2.0 or 2.1, you've got to update everything. The only light at the end of the tunnel for me as somebody that has a big investment in AWCST receivers is that the multi-protocol systems that are out there from people like Jumper, people like Radio Master, their uh, 4-in-1 and 5-in-1 modules support both version 1.x of AWCST and version 2. So even if I buy a receiver and it comes with AWCST D16 version 2 on it and I've got a multi-protocol radio, I can still bind to it and still use it. And it would be nice if FreeSky were doing that kind of stuff on their radio to try and preserve and protect the investment that pilots like me have made in their technology over the last five years, which has enabled them to grow to the size of business that they are and be as successful as they have. I really hope that those of us who might not be jumping on the access bandwagon just yet remain supported and looked after. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.